This elixir uh, was so successful that the monks produced it during 300 years until the French Revolution. Welcome to the Lush Life Podcast. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, and I bring you the how-to guide for living life one cocktail at a time. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by cocktails ever since. Together, we'll learn from bartenders, brand ambassadors, distillers, and others why certain drinks are popular in certain cultures, how to make the perfect old-fashioned, when to shake and when to stir, and so much more. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let the fun begin. Yes, you're still in the right place. Best Sips is a new name, the Lush Life Podcast, to go hand in hand with its new website, A Lush Life Manual, the how-to guide for living life one cocktail at a time. The liqueur known as Benedictine may have been invented in 1510 when the legendary Don Bernardo Vincelli mixed together 27 herbs and spices to create a secret elixir that wowed them until the French Revolution. But it took Alexandre Le Grand a successful wine trader, to bring it to the world as we know it now. While visiting the Palais Benedictine in Fécamp, France, I was lucky enough to sit down with Yolande de Bois, the brand homes manager, for a short lesson in Benedictine history, and to sling a few Benedictine cocktails with local famed mixologist Marc Jean. We join Yolande first as she starts in with our history lesson. Okay. So Benedictine um, dates back to 1510. At this period, um, monks were living in the Abbey of Fécamp, and most of them were very interested in alchemy, they were interested in herbalists, but they were herbalists. And most of them were looking for elixir, which uh, would uh, make the life longer. You know, it was the panacea universelle, the panacea, and they were looking for um, elixir which would help people to uh, keep uh, healthy. And one of them was Don Bernardo Vincelli. He came from Italy. And he was very interested maybe more in alchemy than in uh, herbs and spices. And he was clearly looking at the universal panacea. So um, for that he created a lot of elixirs. And one was so successful that uh, he was drunk even by people who were not ill or sick, because it was very good. (laughs) And um, uh, this uh, elixir at this time uh, was so successful that the monks produced it during 300 years until the French Revolution. And the French Revolution was a uh, a very troubled period and monks had to escape, otherwise they would have had the head cut. So the monks escaped, and the recipe of this famous and so good elixir disappeared. But um, by by luck, in 1863, um, a wine merchant called Alexandre Le Grand, from Fécamp in Normandy, was um, sorting uh, old books in his uh, library, and he found by, by chance an old book um, which was treating about alchemy a lot. And at the end of the book, there were three or four uh, recipes. And one of them, one was um, written by Don Bernardo in Chile and was a recipe of an elixir based on 27 plants and spices. And at this time, he, at this moment, Alexander has found the famous recipe, which was disappeared since a lot of years. Had he heard of this famous Benedictine before finding the recipe? I don't think so. I don't think so because I think if he had le- um, heard something about, he would have looked after it. 
So it was and totally it was just, lost. The, the recipe, it the was whole lost. thing was totally lost. It was lost. And he found these recipes. And he was not looking after it. Mm-hmm. And actually, he um, had this recipe in his uh, library because the last monk who escaped, who had to escape uh, the, the abbey at, during the French Revolution, um, gave a lot of precious objects and precious books and manuscripts to the tax officer of the Abbey of Fécamp to make sure these objects will be for safekeeping. And um, the tax officer was an ancestor of Alexandre Le Grand. That's why it, these objects were in his family. And when he discovered this uh, recipe, he was really intrigued. And he decided to recreate it. So he needed nearly one year. He succeeded. He succeeded. And in tribute to the monks, he called it Benedictine, because it was Benedictine monk, Don Bernardo Vincelli, who created the very first recipe. He used the Dom, Deo Optimo Maximo, which is also uh, the um, title of, of the monk, Don Bernardo Vincelli, Dom Perignon, for instance, and it means uh, to God the biggest, uh, the biggest. Kind of Dom is like the biggest, greatest. So it's Domine, yes. Optimo, Maximo, right? So it's, it's the, the best, Optimo, the Maximo. greatest. Si. Right? Yes, the, the greatest. <laughs> and um, he used the coat of arms of the Abbey of Fico. And they are still on the bottle too. He used the seal of the Abbey of Fico, which is still on the bottles, and he made clearly a link between the Abbey of Fico and Benedictine. And it was not more an elixir because uh, in the 19th century, elixir didn't exist anymore. It was liqueur, so it was a liqueur Benedictine. So that is the story of uh, Benedictine. And after that, Alexandre Le Grand, who was just an uh, amazing um, man, very intelligent, very visionary. Um, he decided to export his um, liquor very quickly, three years after he did. He did. And the USA and the, um, Russia were the very first markets. And he knew that to be able to export, he had to, to make his liquor known all over the world. That's why he uh, created a lot of advertising of, of tools, you know, to... to, to to, to present, to show his uh, brand, and he was really, really very successful. It was, it is amazing what he did. What were some of the tools he used to market it then? For instance, he had the idea to create. He has created menus with. Um, it's not you. You will write the menu yourself, but the drawings were drawings with Benedictine, but for instance, Benedictine in the USA, and you will see American um, people, Benedictine in India, and you will see uh, the drawing shows Indian people, uh, Benedictine in Malaysia, Benedictine in China, Benedictine everywhere in the world. So it was just amazingly intelligent, and at this period, it was very rare to do that. So paper products. He was already creating... Products. He was creating, yes, because Benedictine is perfect for the USA. So perfect for the USA. So he will highlight um, the daily life of American people in the drawing, and in the menu, for instance. He created a lot of um, uh, raids. He created... Um, he asked a very... Um, he was passionate by art, and he asked um, contemporary uh, artists to highlight Benedictine in advertising, in... Um, uh, paintings in and in Washington, I think there is an original um, painting of a famous uh, painter, uh, which with the Battle of Benedictine, in Belgrade there is also one, and writers have uh, used Benedictine in their books, and Benedictine was known everywhere, 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 because he did everything to succeed, and he did really. And he still use it. You still use the same bottle, the same everything. It looks the same, doesn't it? Absolutely, the same bottle, and the bottle now is a bit um, less. Um, uh, how do you say that? 
like fat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit. You're using your hands to create fat. <laughs> a bit thin, bit thinner. Thinner. Uh huh. But that's all. That's absolutely all. His signature is always is still there. The Benedictine uh, is still there. Dom is still is still there. The coat of arms of Fico are still there. Yes, it's the same bottle. And it's the recipe. Iconic the bottle. recipe. Oh, the recipe is the same. It's the same. Yes, it's the same. And um, you make some amazing cocktails, right? Yes. And you have a famous bartender. <laughs> yes, with Marc Jean. All right. Should we go speak to him now? Yes, please. That's a very good idea. All right. After I spoke with Yolande, I was able to have a short interview with Marc Jean, head bartender of the five-star Normandy Barriere in Deauville, and mixologist on call for the Benedictine Cocktail Workshops. Um, a few years ago, um, four or five years ago, uh, Paris Benedictine decided to uh, communicate uh, about mixology around Benedictine. And they were looking for for uh, an ambassador uh, who uh, lives not very far away from here, uh, and uh, somebody who can, comes very quickly to uh, make workshop at the Palais Benedictine for groups, for individual people. Uh, so we started this fabulous adventure uh, five years ago now. And where were you working? Where, or where are you um, working? Head, my main job is head bartender at Hotel Normandie Barrière de Ville, it's a five stars uh, hotel on the, on the coast. Uh, so at one hour from here. Uh, and uh, I heard that uh, they were looking for somebody uh, to make a bartender, professional bartender to make a workshop. Uh, so I met Julie uh, five years ago. And uh, we start the adventure around uh, uh, the work session, the workshop uh, around the team mixology, and, uh, uh, and it's a very nice adventure. And where are you from originally? In France? I'm from Normandy. I'm so from you've... Normandy. Yes, I'm a local. I'm a local. So you know, in Normandy, we've got um, two very famous spirits. Uh, we've got the Cavados. And we got Benedictine. So uh, I love to work with Cavados and I love to work Benedictine because Benedictine is, uh, uh, of course, a well known um, liquor around the world, but uh, everybody knows Benedictine neat or on the rocks. And um, we have, again, a lot of work to make uh, to, to, to make uh, Benedictine. Um, to make the, the communication around Benedictine mixology, uh, we have a lot of work to do again to make it known because uh, people, um, not enough people, people for me, uh, know Benedictine around mixology. And today, it's a liquor you can find all over the world in famous uh, bar all over the world, very famous bar. Uh, and Baton love to work with Benedictine because is very uh, specific liquor uh, with a very um, uh, complexity aromatic and it's very nice to work with this kind of liquor uh, but uh, we have to communicate we have to work we have to uh, to do a lot of work uh, um, uh, a lot of workshop to make it you know, uh, all over the world why did you start working in hospitality huh uh, because uh, you know I because it's not a job for me you know I always say it like the theater you know we don't make the, the, the job of bartender uh, it's a fantastic job you met uh, you have a lot of adventure you met a lot of people uh, and it's very very interesting and uh, I say something every day I never go to work I'm going to the theater and I'm an actor you know I'm an actor behind my ball and I love to make my job every day. And I'm working in the Normandy Hotel for even 30 years now. Yes, I, the first time I came in Normandy uh, at Deauville, it was in 1988. So it was uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, <laughs> as you want. Uh, so, you know, if you, you have to be patient. You have to be, you have to love your job. Uh, I don't make the job like a regular job, like a usual job, because it's, uh, it's all my life. So... Uh, so I love that. So were you always drawn to using yeah. the local spirits? Yeah, yeah. Always? Yeah, always. Yes, yes, yes. And the, main, the two main uh, local spirits are Calvados right. and Benedictine. 
uh, and I want uh, to I want to uh, to mix uh, Benedictine uh, as much as I mix Calvados uh, in my bar, and uh, we have to work because and we have to uh, we have to uh, so we we create cocktail with Benedictine every year. Uh, we put on our uh, cocktail list, and uh, our work, our job is to make them discover to our uh, clients every so day. So this must have been a dream. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yes, your it dream, is. I yeah. know. And so yeah. let's talk about the cocktails you make. Yeah. Um, was it difficult to figure out what Benedictine might go with, what different spirits? I mean, when you're, cre- you're creating the new menu, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... What do you start from? How do you start? Huh. Uh, I st- I heard the tendance. I heard uh, what you know. You have tendance mixology. You have tendance with mixology. So you have to be attentive uh, with that. And uh, then uh, you make some. Uh, you make some tests. You make some tests every day. Uh, you ask your colleagues. Uh, what do you think? Oh, what do you think? I make something. Try it, etc. And uh, it's every day, every day, every day. Uh, we have we are lucky because every day we have on the market spirit, new spirit, new liquors, new creams, new syrup, uh, so new spices. So we can. It's very. It's a mixology. It's like cooking, you know. So uh, you can create every day something different. And uh, so it's a you know it's it's my job, but it's. Uh, uh, I never create something alone. I need my team to make this job. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, um, together. We have to be together. We have to work together. Uh, I can't create something alone. I have to be to have. Uh, um, uh, I have that my colleagues uh, approve, love, and uh, or agree with uh, what I create. You know, so it's very very difficult. What is one of your favorite cocktails that you've created so far? Ah, mm, uh, well, it's um, my favorite cocktail. So um, now it's one with uh, uh, the last one I created with Benedictine. Uh, this is Monk Sour, the Monk Sour, uh, the one I did. Uh, uh, we did together. Uh, it's uh, for me. It's um, um, it's you know it's. Uh, uh, we have the three S. The three S in mixology is you have the sweet, uh, the sour, and the strongness. And it's um, it's like an orchestra, you know. All of the uh, the instruments uh, are playing together, but at the same time. So it's wonderful. And I think it's time to have now a very nice monk sour for us. I think if it's great. Yeah, I would love absolutely. that. So let's go. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Mark got down to making me some of his favorite Benedictine cocktails, including the one he mentioned, the Monk Sour, which is our cocktail of the week. So start with 25 ml of freshly squeezed lemon juice in our shaker, two bar spoons of organic honey syrup, one dash of orange bitters, grated nutmeg, 50 ml of Benedictine, and 15 ml of egg white. Make sure you add the egg white last. Then add ice, shake hard, strain into a cup, and garnish with nutmeg. Serve in a wooden cup if you can. This and all the recipes you hear on the podcast can be found at alushlifemanual.com, where you'll also find all the ingredients in our shop. Thanks so much to Yolande and Mark for introducing us to the past and modern history of Benedictine. Yolanda told me that if you feel as if you have a cold coming on, the perfect antidote is a little Benedictine and boiling water. Sometimes I drink it even when I don't have a cold. It's just that good. Next week, we head east. That's East London, as in the East London Liquor Company. Mikey Pendergast, not only one of the founding members, but also the East London Liquor Company's official brand ambassador, is here to regale us with stories of archaeology, neurobiology, and the most important, mixology. Until next time, bottoms up. Thanks for listening to the Lush Life Podcast, the sister of A Lush Life Manual. 
For more information and links to everything you heard, plus a bit more, please visit alushlifemanual.com. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde. All things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. Lush Life is produced by Evo Terra. And I'm your hostess, Susan Schwartz. I'll see you at the bar.